Okay, beta, we have this question, question number four, Charles Atlas. And in that question, we need to find what? We need to find the sales part. Now we need to do this part A, prepare sales ledger control account. So let us see, beta, how can we prepare a sales ledger control account? We studied previously that sales ledger control account is a customer's account, is a debtor account. And customer is basically an asset for the business. Then uh, if the customer is asset, then the opening balance must come on the debit side. Now, as you can see, the year is ending on 31st December 2013. Then the year must have been started on 1st January 2013. So balance brought down, opening balance would always come on the debit side. Now, as you can see, beta, in this question, question number four, Charles Atlas, uh, 1st January opening data is given. Now, in the start of the year, SOFP that we have, trade receivables value is already given, that is 33,000, okay? So the opening balance would be 33,000. It is an opening balance for customers. And whenever beta we sell goods on credit, then this would increase our debtor. So what would be the double entry for that? Entry would be sales account would be created and customer's account would be debited. Now this sales ledger control account uh, is not a sales account, but instead it is a customer's account. Okay, so the customer would be debited and the sales account would be created. Now, what happens when the customer pay us the amount due? Now, the entry would be bank would be debited and customer's account would be created. Now, let us see how much money we have received from our credit customers this year. As you can see, check received from credit customers. Okay, our customers paid us how much amount this year? 166660. So the entry would be bank account would be debited and SLCA debtor account would be created. Now we need to find out what other transactions we can record in a sales ledger control account. Beta, uh, there is a discount allowed. Okay, when our credit customers pay us promptly or quickly, uh, then we are supposed to give them some discount as a token of uh, goodwill or maybe as a good gesture that they are paying us earlier than promised, then it is known as discount allowed and it is part of a cash discount. So the entry would be discount allowed would be debited and customer's account would be credited. Now, is there any other transaction that relates to customers? Yes, we have return inwards. Whenever our customers pay us, uh, no, whenever customers are returning faulty goods to us, then it will be a return inward. Although examiner is not accepting return inward now. So I'm going to rename it as sales return instead of return inward. Okay. Although there is a, uh, it is an older question and in which the examiner had used the terminology of return inward. But in recent years, uh, 23, the examiner is not accepting this return inward. Instead, we are going to write sales return. Now, is there any other transaction? Uh, we have bad debt. Okay, bad debt again is the older terminology. The newer name is irrecoverable debt. Okay, whenever customers, credit customers fail to pay us the amount due, then it would be known as an irrecoverable debt. Okay, an irrecoverable debt beta would decrease our trade receivables. So the entry would be irrecoverable debt would be debited and trade receivables would be created. Now what happens at the end of the year, we need to write a balance carried down. If opening balance is coming on the debit side, then the closing balance for customers must come on the credit side. Now, as you can see at the end of the year, uh, uh, the, the problem with single entry question is that the data is all scattered. We need to find out uh, the relevant data and to use it in the account. And this you will learn through practice. Now, at the end of the year, as you can see, the trade receivables value is given. That is 20832. If the opening balance is coming on the debit side, then the closing balance must come on the credit side. Now, what we need to do, I need to balance this T account in order to find this sales value. Now, as you can see, the bigger side beta is credit side. If I add up the greater side, that is credit side, I'll be writing it in on both of the sides. And the thing that is missing is basically sales. Now, the sales that we found out is 169492. And this is basically a credit sale. You must remember one thing beta that whenever we are making a debtor account, 
a debtor is only created whenever we sell goods on credit okay so the cash sale is never included in an slca in a sales ledger control account uh, there is only credit sale just remember a uh, cash sale or sales on check never comes in a debtor account okay debtor means a uh, credit customers okay credit customers account only contain which sale credit sales okay although we are done with this a part in the a part we just needed to make a sales ledger control account but in the later part we also need to prepare an income statement and we can do this uh, total sales working here only so it will complement us uh, in making the part d okay so uh, as you may be aware that uh, in an income statement we write total sale instead of credit sale now beta total sale consists of two types of sales one is cash sale and one is credit sale now we have already done uh, finding the credit sales we are done finding the credit sales and now let us find how much cash sale amount we do have uh, beta in order to find the cash sale we need to uh, see uh, either we do have any cash or not cash in hand if we do not beta have any cash in hand we do not need to make cash account instead we can just uh, find the cash sale easily uh, now let us see is there any uh, sales relating to cash beta another name for cash sale in this single entry is cash takings as you can see cash takings bank this means this was the cash sale that we uh, went to deposit in the bank okay this was the cash sale that we banked and this is 30000 and now we also want to see is there any other adjustment relating to cash sale uh, see the examiner is saying all cash taking were bank except 29 so all of the cash sale was deposited except this amount so what about this amount what did we uh, do with this amount uh, all, out of this 29,000, 10,000 we uh, deposited, sorry, we paid uh, to our staff as wages and the remainder we kept it for personal use. Okay, Charles Atlas kept this amount for personal use. So this means this 29,000 was also generated from sales, but unfortunately we were unable to deposit this amount to our bank. And what did we do with this amount? Out of this 29 beta, 10,000 was spent by us to pay wages to the staff and the remainder 19,000 uh, we spent uh, at our home maybe, okay, for personal use. So no matter where we spend this amount, the important thing is that, that this amount must be added as a cash sale. And why are we adding this as a cash sale beta? Uh, actually, the cash sale was 59,000. Out of this 59,000, we deposited 30,000 in the business bank account and this 29,000 was already spent. So no matter whether we have spent this amount or not, beta, we need to record this amount as a cash sale. Okay, we need to record this amount as a cash sale. So this would be our cash sale 30 plus 29, 59,000 would be our cash sale and this would be our credit sale. If I add up both of these, then I, I am left with this total sale that is double two eight four nine two. Okay, this is the total sale, and this was basically part A. Or although this working was not uh, relating to part A, but this was important while uh, preparing part D, uh, while preparing income statement. So in this question, beta, we studied how to calculate total sales that should be included in an income statement. 